Hey guys, Chad Horrible Modeler here, and while we're waiting on the, the Enterprise to finish drying and get ready for the decaling section time, I think it's uh, time to get started on another kit. That kit is going to be the Pegasus Hobbies Terminator 2 Aerial Hunter Killer. I was pretty much in all of the Terminator movies. Obviously had huge roles in the McGee Salvation part simply because of what they could do with CGI instead of uh, models that were used back in the Cameron uh, days, which I'm not really sure if those were models or not. They probably were. Um, but anyway... It's a great kit. I'll show you a few parts of it. The kit's made out of ABS plastic, which is a little bit thicker than your usual styrene. So you feel like you're just getting a lot more for your money and a lot better construction, considering the price of the kit really isn't that bad. Uh, there's been a few builds and reviews on it already, so I'm not, not going to go that far into it. I'm pretty sure Brad Hare Productions has already did one. And uh, his looks great. Now take a look at that base. Way better than what you normally get with your usual kits. There's buildings, skulls, everything. Post-apocalyptic stage there. I plan on doing some lighting with that. Some really cool painting. Some fire effects. Maybe order a couple little zombie things that are out there from Dark World Creations possibly. Uh, going to be using a lot of the MIG Productions fantasy line of pigments, which is uh, a volcanic ash that they have, which will look super cool. Because we all know from the first Terminator movies, that's pretty much what it is. It's just ashed over stuff, people, you know, crazy. So I've already started on the kit. I have basically uh, started with the engine pods. I've got the seams all sanded and filled. They look really good. Been primered. Pretty much just went with my standard way of filling easy seams because the seams and fit on this seems to be pretty good, which is the Vallejo plastic putty down into there and just uh, scooped off with a little bit with a wet cotton bud, leaving the uh, plastic in there. The way I get to those small seams when it's possible, I mean, let's face it, it's not possible every time, no matter how good your fit is. Uh, but I really am a big believer on in the thick uh, Tamiya cement here. You put it on both sides of your piece. You smash your piece together, work it back and forth a little bit. You get that glue just oozing out of that seam, and that's basically what you can sand back to for a start. And then you might just have a little bit left over where you can come through with some extra thin glue or some uh, Mr. Servicer, dissolved putties, those type of things. You know, those larger gaps, everybody, once you get some experience, you're going to know when it's time to go for the Bondo or for the Squadron. I learned a lot about that and when I smashed my Defiant back together after tearing it apart and having to redo all that stuff, let me tell you. What else is going on? Lighting, yeah, going to light this. Obviously, there's uh, the big spotlights. There's four white LED spotlights. I'm not sure if I'm going to use three or five millimeter uh, yet. I do know that I am going to be... Let's see here. You can't really see it back in there. Let me show you this side. Back here on the wingtips, there is uh, blue and red navigation lights. I've seen uh, some people use uh, fiber optics. Uh, I'm just not going to use the fiber optics because I'm just having a lot of problems with them as far as just not looking good when I'm done. Uh, the snapping them off and stuff like that. So there's better ways to do things sometimes. I think this way, this time I'm going to use SMDs. And you can get these in places where you can't get the fiber optics. You know, like in my, this kit right here, a 1.5 millimeter fiber optic, it really isn't thick enough to cover the hole where the 
white's coming out of. You really need a tube, but you can't really bend the tube 90 degrees correctly to get it up in there. So you got to take plastic out and everything like that. And, you know, these are going to be great. I can basically take these, coat them with the blue and red. Uh, if I don't have any blue and red SMDs, then I can use uh, Tamiya Tints to get my colors. So I've tested out the rig I made with the fiber optics, and I just didn't like it. Uh, it's going to make getting the fit harder, and it means more gap filling and sanding, and I just don't want to deal with all that. SMDs is going to look good. We're going to pull it off. So, like I said, got the these done. I'm uh, going to be using everything's going to be covered in an uh, all clad black base, and then we're going to go on with all clad chrome all over everything. And we're going to be doing some pre and post shading, especially on the intake manifolds with the all clad exhaust manifold, which is kind of like a burnt iron steel kind of color and the magnesium which is like a dirty steel that I used on the Galactica so that's going to be really cool uh, let's see got the gun done already got uh, the barrel drilled out there if you can see it yep there it is and I also uh, filled in all the little gaps if you can see the white around this edge right here and then down in there that's using my uh, q-tip and Vallejo acrylic putty technique which maybe one of these days I might make it famous so it's really easy works really well too let's see here other than that that should be about it uh, hopefully the next time we get back we'll have some uh, lighting and some construction done and I got the gun, the arms, the intakes. I went through a few rounds of sanding and primering to get these the way they are. And there still may be a little bit on there. But sometimes you just got to know when to, when to call it quits. But the thing about it is, is all clads will show every, every mishap. Luckily, this model is going to be weathered, so I will be able to hide anything that is not, that anything that's visible. And uh, let's face it, when you're dealing with uh, thin scribe lines and everything like that, you can only rescribe so much detail into a piece. You just got to know when to cut your losses, and I think I'm pretty much there. But they, they, they look 95% to me. So I think the final product will be good enough. And uh, let's see. Instructions, nothing really that crazy. Don't really need to show you that. we got a tank coming out, which is the aerial, no, the 100 killer tank, which will be pretty sweet. So that's probably going to do it for this update. Pretty short, but kind of informative. You know, you want to do this or any other kit, get you some good sanding materials, some scratch and fill primer, some good glue, excuse me, and uh, you know, just see what works for you. But uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Believe me, I made plenty. That's how I got my name. Well, that's how I named myself. Not that cool. Uh, but uh, that's it. So anyway, until the next update, guys, hope you had a good Thanksgiving. And peace.